بسمله اخرنا يلا قوموا بسمله سيبنا شوي معلش معلش انا بكره الياسمين بكره عشان بصحى بدري وساعات بروح انام تحت الصدر عارفه الياسمين اللي بتجمعيه بيروح فين الياسمين اللي انا بجمعه بيتحول الى عطور وبيروح الدول اللي في العالم Perfume is a $50 billion industry and growing. And there's one flower that's found in hundreds of bottles, considered to be the most valuable scent in the business. The most beautiful flower that exists in perfumery. The most exotic and wonderful of all scents. Jasmine. BBC Eye Investigations takes you to the heart of the jasmine trade in Egypt to reveal dark secrets in the perfume industry. Children, some as young as five years old, are working in dangerous conditions throughout the night, and pickers are earning as little as a dollar a day, while huge profits are made by giants in the business. This investigation reveals who the real masters of the perfume industry are. There is this hidden layer. They are the ones controlling everything that goes into the fragrance. And how they are falling short of the human rights commitments that they're promoting publicly. They are not actually doing things that they are promised to do. It's very disturbing. As we expose for the first time the use of child labor in the supply chains of some of the world's most luxurious fragrances. الموسم بتاع الياسمين ست شهور في السنه والعنصر الاساسي بتاعها نفسه هو الزيت. صح كده؟ محمد grew up in the village of Shubra Balula in El Gabia, the center of the jasmine trade in Egypt. Around 720 acres of land across the region are planted with these precious flowers. Mohammed used to work in the jasmine industry, but now he organizes tours to educate people about it. دي بتطلع منها ايه؟ دي؟ اكثر كمية زيت بالظبط. الحيالي. مينا ال هباوي، a human rights activist and beauty influencer, has joined Mohammed's tour to look into where and how her perfume is made. واو. فالموضوع بيبقى دقيق قوي يعني مش جدا. اللي ابتدى الموضوع ده اساسه كان حد اسمه احمد فخري ده هو اللي دخل اصلا ياسمين هنا في في القريه في ستينات القرن اللي فات او جاسمين از از ا فيري سبيشال كروب ماي نيم از حسين فاكري اند اي ام اونر بريزيدنت اوف اي فاكري اند كو Jasmine is a lady of the night, so she only has a story to tell you at night, so you want to catch that fragrance.
الناس دايما شايفين ان الدنيا قدامهم ورديه بس مش شايفين الجانب الثاني مش شايفين الجانب اللي هو ان مين اللي بيتعب عشان يوصل للنقطه دي When the sun goes down in this region, there is a secret world of the perfume industry that you don't see. Mirna wants to meet the people that pick her jasmine and is heading to fields situated outside of Shubra Balula. <laughs> قلقانة شوية بس خلينا نشوف اليوم هيمشي ازاي صباح الفل عاملة ايه؟ الحمد لله الحلاوة دي السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ايه الأخبار؟ تمام الحمد لله يلا يا أولاد Egyptian jasmine blooms just after sunset In order to catch the fragrance the flower needs to be picked before it withers in the sun's heat Heber's family is one of thousands of pickers that have to start work in the middle of the night. يلا يا انس يلا عشان تلحق الحضانه الجدع يا عم انا مش مبهدلنا يا الله يا الله The pickers have to strain their eyes to find the flowers and fight through mosquitoes and pesticides as they gather as much jasmine as possible اي ريحه بتعملها الساعه على الصدر وزيت ريحه اللسان بتضغط عليها اكتر في عل عنده حساسية في الجيل بطل شهر شيء جسمه اسمه بس ملأ اسمه حلو قوي لي ربط إيد كده وإيدك توجع كده أنت آه عشان إيدي مش عارف مش ما بسرعة في الوقت مش عارف تجمع بسرعة عشان إيدك وجعاكي والعادي بتجمع بسرعة عايز تلاقي إيه لما تكبر صوت like the majority of jasmine pickers in this region, Heba and her children work throughout the harvest season from June to November. The temperature can reach up to 40 degrees Celsius. When the sun comes up, the pickers deliver their flowers to a collection point, of which there are hundreds. Once the flowers have been weighed, they are transported to factories operating in the region. These are the main three, A. Fakri & Co, Hashem Brothers, and Mashalico. The factories extract jasmine oil from the flowers to sell to fragrance houses around the world. That's a i أربع أفراد بيجمعهم عشان يجيبوا 30 جنيه 35 جنيه في اليوم من قبل الفجر للساعة 8 أو 9 يعمل لهم إيه 30 جنيه فرح بطيخة بخمسين وبستين جنيه 
Heber, like most of the jasmine pickers, is what's known as an independent picker and works on a small holder farm. Out of what she earns, she has to pay a third to the owner of the land that she picks flowers on. Heber alone picked under a kilo of flowers overnight, but with the help of her children picking, she managed to deliver one and a half kilos of jasmine flowers to the collection point, leaving the family with roughly one and a half dollars for today's work. Inflation in Egypt is at an all-time high. The Egyptian pound has depreciated by more than 50% since 2022. Relatively, independent pickers are making less for jasmine than they have ever done before and are living below the poverty line. At the start of every season, the price for a kilo of jasmine flowers is set by the factory owners. The low price is the reason why Heber has to take her children to work. But how many other families are forced to do the same? During the summer of 2023, the BBC filmed across this region. We spoke to many residents and witnessed that at four different locations, a significant number of jasmine pickers were children under the age of 15, working on small holder farms. And we can reveal that most of the flowers from these locations are sent via collection points to the main factories, a Fakri & Co, Hashem Brothers, and Mashalico. Multiple sources have also told us that there are children working on farms directly owned by one of the factories, Mashalico. But we had no way of accessing them, unless we went undercover. In Egypt, it is illegal for any child under the age of 15 to work between the hours of 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. But in a multi-billion dollar industry, who is really to blame? Back in Cairo, Mirna is trying to find out more about her favorite bottle of perfume. 
So I have this bottle of perfume. It's one of my top favorites. Lancome Idol Intense. It has the scent of the fields in Gharbaya because it has Egyptian jasmine in it. That's why I love it so much. It opens up with notes of mandarin orange, bitter orange, Egyptian jasmine. This is the perfumer who made this perfume. Currently serving at Jevoudan. Who is Jevoudan? The perfume supply chain goes far beyond the three main factories in Egypt. The factories sell their jasmine oils to international fragrance houses where perfumes are created. Givaudan, based in Switzerland, is one of the largest of four major fragrance houses, valued at $38 billion. And they've been sourcing their jasmine oil from A. Fakri & Co. for years. But where does Givaudan fit in the wider industry? We spent months speaking to multiple sources and industry insiders from the factories to the fragrance houses. Most were too afraid to go on the record. The industry of perfumery is a very non-transparent and cynical world. It's all quite hermetically sealed. We arranged meetings with people who didn't show up and received message after message explaining that no one felt able to speak freely. It's a highly competitive, highly saturated market driven by old school principles, opacity being part of them. But one established perfumer agreed to meet with us. Christoph Laudemiel spent years working inside one of the fragrance houses, where he created Polo Blue for Ralph Lauren and Amber Absolute for Tom Ford. He now works independently. In the perfume industry, there is this hidden layer, very little known from the public, which we can call the masters of the perfume industry. As consumers, we are able to choose from thousands of perfumes that are sold by world-famous brands. But these perfume brands are owned by a handful of conglomerates, a hidden layer, considered to be the masters of the industry. Our investigation reveals the use of Egyptian jasmine in some of the perfumes owned by two of the masters, L'Oreal and Estee Lauder, and specifically their brands, Lancome and Erin Beauty. These uh, companies, they decide how or what is going to go in the bottles. They decide about the packaging and they impose a very strict budget to create the fragrance. That budget, it trickles down, that, that really that uh, shackle, if you wish, trickles down all the way down to the harvesters. A more complete picture of the master's supply chain emerges. When L'Oreal and Estee Lauder decide they want to put a bottle of perfume on the market, they send a brief and a budget to the fragrance houses, like Givaudan and Fermanich, to create the perfume. And jasmine is sourced from the factories. These hidden masters that people don't know much about, they uh, sign contracts with the brands and with the celebrities. So in fact, the brands don't know what is inside the bottles. Those masters organize all this for them. But the master's interest is to have the cheapest oil possible to put in the friend's bottle and to sell it as expensive as possible on the market. The fragrance that is in that bottle costs to the masters about, in average, $1 in that one dollar, you have the salary of the perfumers, the salary of the harvesters, the distillery, the logistic to get all these ingredients to the perfume factory to make the fragrance. If the liquid inside our perfume bottles costs on average one dollar, what are we really paying for? Industry experts have given us a breakdown of the estimated costs that go into a $100 bottle of perfume. 
This further indicates that the jasmine pickers receive a very small fraction of what we consumers spend. The fragrance industry is booming, with more people buying perfume than ever before. Best jasmine perfumes. I have over 400 bottles of perfume. Yes, it's a lot of them. I'm a fragrance fanatic. 3,000 new fragrances were launched in 2022 alone, with many brands including Egyptian jasmine in some of their best-selling perfumes, and are sold on the market with ever-rising price tags. While it's boom time for the industry, the pickers are not seeing any of these profits and are struggling despite promises that have been made by both the masters and the fragrance houses. In their promotional material, they paint a picture of ethical sourcing practices. Our products and day-to-day -day actions contribute to the health and well-being of people and our planet. At L'Oreal Group, we create the beauty, beauty that cares. Our business wouldn't exist without the communities where we source and in which we operate. We want to ensure they benefit from working with us. One of the largest fragrance houses, Givadan, says on its website, we do not practice or tolerate any form of child exploitation and do not provide employment to children. They've taken photos from El Garbia to promote their commitments in protecting jasmine pickers and their families. And they say in one of their glossy web pages, we work directly with local smallholder farmers. Our work also contributes to more stable incomes to help improve the lives of these communities. But the promotional material that exists across the industry doesn't match with what we've seen in the jasmine fields in Egypt. Basmala's eyes have started to cause her pain. And today her mother Heba is taking her to a doctor's appointment 30 kilometers away from her village. أهلاً أهلاً يا بسملة عاملة إيه؟ قولي لي بقى عينك تعبكي؟ إزاي؟ كل ما أنت سكتي بقى كده تعبتي ها. تمام. أذكرنا سنين بس حالا الساعة ثلاثة. بالليل. يعني أنت الشغل بتاع الجامعة يسون كله بالليل. بطلع الساعة سبعة ونص الطمان. آه تمام كتير أو اشتغل حوالي ست ساعات ليش؟ خلي بقى عينك مع البالونة. ودي رسمة إيه؟ مش شايفاها طب ودي؟ طبعا سيفير ألجي يعني عندها حساسية شديدة جدا 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 وهي حتى المغيرة لون بياض العين الاستمرارية في طبيعة العمل ده وطبعا عدم أخذ علاج باستمرار الالتهابات دي يأثر على النظر والكواليتي بتاعت الرؤية بس انت شاطرة صح؟ مش انت شاطرة؟ عشان انت بتروحي الكتاب مع الشاطر ألف سلام The doctor fees and medication were expensive. And Heba and her children weren't able to work that night, losing a day's pay. The promises to support the communities that are growing jasmine in Egypt go far beyond glossy promotional material. Every layer of the supply chain has also signed a letter of commitment to the United Nations, pledging to abide by UN guidelines promoting safe working practices and eliminating child labor. It's very disturbing. We took our evidence to Professor Tomoya Obakata, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Contemporary Forms of Slavery. On paper, they are promising so many good things, like supply chain transparency, 
and, and the fight against child labor. Looking at this footage, they are not actually doing things that they are promised to do. It may look like an empty promise, just a ticking box exercise. There is no safety consideration. They are not able to uh, receive education and their mental and physical well-being uh, are affected as a result of that. And from what I see from these footages, these families may not have a choice but to rely on the children to make money. All of these are quite clear indicators of the hazardous work which may constitute the worst form of child labor. Why is accountability throughout the supply chain voluntary and opaque, with no international regulation despite corporate promises and clear guidelines from the UN? We spoke to a senior executive who works with the fragrance house Givaudan. They agreed to speak to us if we didn't reveal their identity. What you first need to realize is that the relationship between the master and the fragrance house is an informal and trust-based relationship. If a human rights issue in the supply chain comes up, the masters meet with the fragrance house directly. The masters would never carry out specific checks at the factories or fields, for example. Instead, they rely on us to instruct third-party auditing companies to prove that due diligence checks have been done. Two of the main auditing firms that the masters and fragrance houses use are SEDEX and UEBT. SEDEX is a global membership organization that helps identify and manage ethical sourcing risks. The UEBT Ethical Biotrade Standard was developed to help companies and their people in the field. Both SEDEX and UEBT assure their clients that they can help them source responsibly. So why has child labor been missed by some masters and fragrance houses, despite their supply chains being regularly audited? These audit reports are not available to the public, and to obtain them, you have to be part of the supply chain. So we're contacting one of the main producers of jasmine oil in Egypt, A. Fakri & Co, posing as a potential buyer wanting to buy ethically sourced jasmine. After the visit to the factory, they sent us the SEDEX and UEBT audit report. The SEDEX report from A. Fakri & Co. was glowing. However, the visit was pre-announced. They visited during the day and only the factory site was audited. 62 employees were noted to be working there. The youngest worker being 32 years old. There was no mention of the jasmine farms or the thousands of pickers that are working throughout the night across the region. Sarah Dadouche is a professor of law and founder of the Responsible Contracting Project, where she works on improving human rights in global supply chains. A lot of these fragrance companies say, oh, we have all kinds of auditing schemes in place to ensure that there is no child labor anywhere in our supply chain. But what your research reveals is that those systems aren't working. The auditors are only auditing what they're paid to audit. And so that may not include uh, the jasmine fields. It may not include the price that is being paid for the jasmine. When we went through the UEBT report that A. Fakri & Co. gave us, we found that they had visited the farms in 2023, and there was an indication of a human rights issue, although there are no further details as to what the human rights issue is, and no mention of child labor. And despite this, A. Fakri & Co. was still awarded a verification which means the company can advertise to the rest of the industry that they offer responsibly sourced jasmine oil. 
we asked ZX and UBT for a comment, and they said, ZX is firmly against all forms of labor rights abuses. We exist to help businesses address these. But no one tool alone can or should be relied on to uncover and remediate all environmental and human rights risks or impacts. UEBT conducted field assessments in Egypt in 2023. One company has been issued a responsible sourcing attestation subject to an action plan which we reviewed and approved. The attestation is valid till mid-2024 and will be withdrawn if the action plan is not implemented. Audit schemes are really just picking up on the symptoms of a business model that isn't working for human rights. The major root cause is the price. The price is something that is very much within the control of the fragrance houses and of the masters. They are the ones that are setting the budget for how much is going to be put into producing a particular fragrance. Things are changing and legislation is coming through, albeit slowly. In 2017, France passed a duty of vigilance law that requires large French companies to identify and prevent serious human rights violations through the impact of their activities and of their suppliers by publishing annual vigilance plans. And in April 2024, the European Parliament adopted the Corporate Sustainability Due Diligence Directive. It's a major piece of legislation that, once enshrined in law, will eventually require EU and non-EU companies to conduct human rights due diligence across their entire value chain. If companies fail to comply and a violation occurs as a result, they may be held liable and face financial penalties. We put all of our findings to the masters of the perfume industry. We never request fragrance houses to go lower than the market price for ingredients at the expense of farmers. Despite our strong commitments and actions, we know that in certain parts of the world where L'Oreal supplies operate, there are risks to our commitments being upheld. In January 2024, our partner performed an on-site human rights impact assessment to identify potential human rights violations, find ways to prevent and mitigate them with a focus on the child labour risks. L'Oreal is actively committed to respecting the most protective internationally recognised human rights standards. L'Oreal Group also publishes yearly global vigilance plans. We believe the rights of all children should be protected and we have contacted our suppliers to investigate this very serious matter. We are taking action to gain better transparency and to work toward improving the livelihoods of sourcing communities. جبت ايه ده بكام؟ خمسة مش انا جايلها لك هاتي فوق ب 10 وهاتي انا جبت كده يعني جبت دي بتعمية بكام؟ 15 وده بكام؟ ب 10 عايز عايز خد عيش اهو هي دي الطعمية اللي انت رحت جبتيها؟ امم احلى طعمية والله العظيم تسلم ايدك كل ما تنحرجيش كل اللي جبتها مش هتلاقي حاجة على الترابيزة كل يا والله يلا ايه رايك؟ بصي يا ستي بصي يا ستي بصي يا من حد من صحابي لقيت فيها ياسمين مصري اللي انتوا بتقعدوا احنا اه ده فعلا ياسمين طب اضربي ساعه تعمل حوالي 200 جنيه اي دي ثمنها 300 دولار تقريبا 10000 جنيه 
كنا بنجمع كيلو ياسمين من الساعة ثلاثة ونص ولا الساعة ثلاثة أربع أولاد بمهم لحد الساعة سبعة ونص أو ثمانية وثلاثين جنيه خمسة وثلاثين جنيه في الآخر فرق زوزة برفان بعشر تلاف جنيه تكفيني شهر حرام كنت متخيله ان الياسمين اللي انت بتجمعيه ده فعلا غالي لهذه الدرجه؟ كلنا عارفين كده بس احنا مين يقرا ومين يسمع ومين يتكلم ومين قلنا كتير البني ادمين هنا البني ادمين ما يسووش حاجه. وعلى فكره انت كده حضرتك ما شفتيش حاجه، في اكتر من كده طبعا. اسود من كده طبعا تعالي شوفهم لما بتبقى الارض مرويه بيبقوا بيجمعوا وهم بيزحفوا على رجلهم من كتر الطين والوحله اللي في الارض. أنا عن نفسي أمهم كانوا بعيط عشانهم بس مغصوبين إن إحنا نعمل كده. أنا عايزة الناس كلها تبقى إيه؟ تحط ريحة وتحط برفان زي ما هي عايزة بس أنا عايزاهم بس لما هم بيرشوا كده على نفسهم يشوفوا فيها ألم الأطفال ويتكلموا بصوت عالي يسمعوا أصحاب المصانع والناس اللي بتستورد من أصحاب المصانع يشوفوا فيها ألم الأطفال. حرام يظلموا الأطفال بتمن البرفان اللي أنت بتقول عليه ده. We asked the three main factories for a comment, and they said, Child labor is entirely prohibited at both our farm, Hussein Fakhri farm, and in the factory. Over 99% of our jasmine is sourced from independent collectors who collect the product from independent farmers. In 2018, under the monitoring of the UEBT, we commenced the Jasmine Plant Protection Products Mitigation Project, which imposes a prohibition on individuals under the age of 18 working on the farms. The suggestion that the jasmine flower price paid to the farmers and pickers puts them below the poverty line is simply wrong. To the contrary, by any comparable agricultural standards in Egypt, jasmine picking is well remunerated. Mashallah doesn't use any pickers whose age is under 18 years old. Every year the price is discussed between the owners of the different factories. Two successive years, Mashaliko has increased the price on September 2022 and October 2023, respectively. For the 2024 crop of jasmine, we'll increase the price. We refuse to comment on the report, which is based on misleading information. He cut jasmine that's completely intoxicating. The masters, it's in their interest to have the public believe with marketing campaigns See, like Jasmine from Egypt, that sounds very sexy and poetic. But there's a big disconnect between the preciousness in the marketing talk and what is actually given to the harvesters. I find it ridiculous. You know, they have to work long hours to be paid uh, that very tiny amount uh, when all these perfume and other companies are able to sell the final products at a very high price. It is unfair. The workers need to get paid fairer wages. <laughs> All of the entities in the perfume industry accept that they have a responsibility to respect human rights and condemn child labor. But in addition to inadequate due diligence checks on the ground and a lack of transparency throughout their supply chain, it appears that the masters have also failed to recognize the impact that their squeeze prices have on the livelihoods of the jasmine pickers. If anything is to change, it will be a commitment that's made by the whole perfume industry to take a shared responsibility in ensuring a living wage reaches the people who pick the flowers that they rely on. So as a consumer, how can we make sure that we're buying ethically made perfume? This shouldn't be on consumers. <laughs> this is not a problem that should be for us to solve. We need law, we need enforcement of those laws, we need corporate accountability, and that cannot just be on the consumers. The concerns raised in the BBC report are deeply alarming. Improving the lives of communities in the jasmine supply chain is a responsibility for the entire chain, and it's incumbent upon us all to continue taking action to remove the risk of child labor entirely. Child labor, in whatever form, diametrically contrasts the principles and standards that we provide ourselves, our suppliers, and all other actors along the supply chain. We have zero tolerance for child labor. We've engaged a trusted third party human rights expert to 
to conduct an independent review of our supply chain. We have now fully transitioned to a new supplier in Egypt. We'll work to support initiatives that seek to collectively address this issue with industry partners and local jasmine farmers, and we're willing to help fund such initiatives. Thank you.